Welcome to the Women Leaders Association podcast, where we believe we go further, faster, and have more fun when we go together. Be sure to tune in each week to hear an empowering message from the world's top women executives, trailblazers, entrepreneurs, and all around fierce female leaders. I'm your host, Julianne Kirkland, and I will be taking you on a deep dive of each message to equip you with the principles, strategies, and tools you need to start crushing your goals, increasing your impact, creating work-life harmony. And did I mention have more fun? Because when you love what you do, you do it better. The Women Leaders Association is the world's largest women executives association with over 30,000 women in executive and leadership positions who are committed to the development and advancement of women in the corporate arena. If you would like to get involved in a Women Leaders Association chapter, would enjoy daily podcasts, or you desire to become a part of the Women's Mastermind Group near you, simply go to womenleaderspodcast.com. Now let's tune in for this incredible message. On today's episode, hear from founder of Gemini Media, Bridget Cutshaw. Bridget is an unabashed health advocate. After dealing with cancer several times herself, her goal is to empower others not to just survive, but to thrive, and encourages to focus on what's important to find your inner strength. Welcome, Bridget. Hey, hey, welcome back to the Women Leaders Podcast. I'm your host, Julianne Kirkland, and I'm so excited that Bridget is with us today. Welcome. Hi, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity, Julianne. I'm glad you're here. So before we hit record, we were just talking, I'm like, is it Bridget or is it Brigitte? And she was like, well, actually I was raised in Georgia by a French mother, so it can be both. And I'm like, cool. It might just be both today. <laughs> That's fine. Everybody, you know, has different uh, background, up, you know, upbringing. So I, I love it. I'm used to speaking. My uncle says I speak uh, English with a French accent when I'm talking to him because <laughs> I'm so not funny. on purpose. I'm mimicking him, I think. <laughs> My husband does the same thing. He grew up in South Georgia. And so when he gets around his family, he, that Southern draw really comes out. I'm like, what's happening right now? Exactly. I've had, I understand. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay. So let's talk about how you got into really helping people understand uh, what self-care is for them and how they can best utilize it. How did you get into this? I got into it on, I show you, I say by accident, because I've had some unexpected health issues. A lot of us do, it's not just me, but it was a reflection on what's going on. What am I doing wrong? What can I do better? And mine was at like 41, I think I was, they had uh, a second mammogram that I had and they found I had breast cancer mm -hmm. and it was early stage, thankfully. But then I had a great breast cancer doctor who was also a researcher. And, but my horn, you know, you just got to keep having these, these checkups and I did everything right. And I still got this, this weird stuff and my hormones were out of whack. And that's when I say out of whack, sorry. That's when he recommended having an MRI of my brain to check out my pituitary, which is where that is starts from all your hormones. But that's when I discovered I had a bigger brain tumor unexpectedly in the back. And, but it grew slow. So my body accommodated to that. And, yeah. and I was raising, you know, my, at the time, my, you know, my sons were under the, one was eight when the breast cancer, first breast cancer, the other one was 11. So I had to raise these boys with my husband going through this. So I had to remain positive. And, but hearing the word brain tumor, that scared me more than breast cancer because it was rare. It's primary. So I believe my curiosity is what is why I'm still here. I think thankful I'm still curious and only work with doctors who are open to questions. That's important. Yeah. And I think doctors are learning too that everybody is is different. That we're not all the same. And that's mm -hmm. when I got I'm like, holy, I won't curse, but holy how did this happen? Right? Because that's yeah. then the doctors called me a zebra among horses because I very healthy, right? Well, it turns out I was, and the breast cancer came back too, by the way. The, mm. that was once, well, that was even more fun, but that was about, um, I'm trying to think how many years after, four or five years after the, the brain tumor was discovered because we couldn't get it under control. Mm. And I had to remain positive <laughs> because I, I wanted to be there for my my sons. I, that was my, my goal. And it was determined that 
I was exposed to something when I was young because I am a military brat. I uh, Mm. was raised near military bases, even though most of my life was spent near Columbus, which is near Fort Benning, which is, I don't know what it's called now. <laughs> but anyway, that's what it was. The curiosity and the doctors were like, Bridget is so healthy, right? And then the same year my you know, my brain tumor was discovered was the same year. My brother, they found a tumor growing, pushing on his heart. So it's an example of our environment. My mother was fine because she wasn't a child at the time. But anyway, that's when I became an advocate and I healed. The doctors were like, you know, what is, you know, what did Bridget do differently? Because I kept asking questions, I went to get certified in nutrition to understand. I saw a holistic epidemic because I'm like, I'm going to, it's not just, I, I looked at the integrative approach. And so I, yes, I did have to go down the route when the breast cancer came back um, with like chemo because it was so aggressive. Sure. And the, again, we're, we're just going to do to the brain tumor. And then the, the brain tumor, I couldn't do surgery. I could, but there was a very high risk of paralysis. Mm. So Okay. So that's when I asked the doctor, if this was your wife, the neurosurgeon, he was like very, very respected here in the state of Georgia. And I said, would you do the surgery on her? And he said, no. So I trusted him. Right. <laughs> because he wasn't. Well, first, do you like your wife? <laughs> Let's start there. Right. right. That's what I want to say. Would you do this on her? But guys, just, I, I still threw in humor, you know, and all that kind of stuff. That's yeah. you just got to laugh about it. But that's what helped me. Um, get through this. And we did cyber knife, which is very new technology, which was very super targeted radiation and it killed it and shrunk it. But what finally truly killed it, Julianne, my OBGYN recommended after the last breast cancer to get a tetanus or Tdap booster shot because they're repurposing that for brain tumors. So I'm like, okay, whatever. It's what killed my brain tumor. Wow. It's, it's been, right. It's been nine years since I've had that booster shot and I'm going to get another one, but it's just, it's just how you're they're repurposing stuff. And so I talk up and like, listen to your body. A lot of people don't believe in that, but I've always just, I knew something wasn't right. Yeah. And I, I, you know, like I said, I helped getting nutrition, understand all that. And I used to, people used to make fun of me because Julianne, I always wanted to eat vegetables. Well, that's because my body was telling me I needed, you know, I was never a big fan of, um, alcohol. I'm just not, I can't handle alcohol. I never could, but you grew up in that environment around, you know, you're partying in college and all that. I just couldn't handle it. And so I never did. And people thought, what's wrong with her? I'm like, no, my body, that's because I didn't know how this brain tumor growing and it took a long time, but that's really what it is. It's, I'm a believer in asking questions and being curious and advocating for yourself. And I think more and more doctors are open to this because they realize they don't, you know, everybody's different. Their, their experiences growing up is different. And I'm so glad that we discovered that kind of brain tumor I had is usually caused by radiation exposure. And it makes sense being around and around military bases. Um, and you, I'm sure you've heard about all that, you know, there's some dangerous, I should say dangerous, but when you're a child, your body is still, developing and that's why you're more prone to picking something i'm not saying this is for everybody but it happened to me and my brother How's that? Yeah. so we'll leave it at that <laughs> yeah wow and you know i think i think it's so uh much to your credit and I, I hope everybody listening is you know whether you've been on military bases or you're like oh my gosh have i been exposed right. like if you just set that aside and really focus on are you aware of your body of what's going on in your body and i'm telling my kids that all the time. Um, my oldest is 15 and my youngest is nine and I have some in, in between. And it's like, you have to be your greatest advocate. I mm -hmm. mama will fight for you all day long, as long as I can. But at the end of the day, I'm not always with you and I'm not you and I'm not living in your body. <laughs> right. You know, like you have to be able to speak up for yourself and say, wait, something's not right. 
And, you know, I just, I want to empower anybody who's listening, who has maybe not had the same uh, response from doctors that you got, which was so wonderful. And I'm so glad you had that experience. Um, but for those who have not had that same to continue to fight for yourself, to continue to seek out those doctors who are more open to have conversations and get curious about, okay, well, what, what else, what else, what else, (laughs) you know, keep taking deeper. There was one doctor I said, bye, because, um, he was pushing pain meds on me. I'm like, but the pain that's before we knew about the, the brain tumor. I'm like, no, 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 no. I didn't want to just take the pain pills. And I, cause yeah. I knew in my tumor, um, was pushing on my brain stem and made a dent in it. My husband said it was very sexy curve. So yeah, we, we had to, we had to laugh when we saw that we're like, right. but it's just, it, you gotta, you know, just, I was polite, but I was like, no, and, uh, I'm not doing that. And he, you know, he didn't know. So he might be open to it now. I don't know. I don't know if he's even, you know, if he's retired, but that's what it is. You just got to ask questions. And I learned the nurses are really good too, because they're the ones that have more one-on-one longer. Um, time in the room. <laughs> right. That's what it is. They're with you. And I mean, I have great doctors, don't get me wrong, but they, they, thank God they had a sense of humor. I think that was important. Not just the curiosity. You gotta, because life is crazy. <laughs> and you gotta embrace the uh, uh, the moment when you can. And I'm so glad that I listened to my body and questioned and yeah. questioned everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it, it's so powerful too that you know, you know, you are presented with this what most people would say is horrible news, right? I don't think anybody gets this news and like, hooray. Um, but then, and then you, again, because you got curious, not only in how can we fight this medically speaking, but also what is my role? What can I do to make my body the best vessel fighting possible, right? Like to right. make the atmosphere in my body as healthy as possible so that I can fight and be at my strongest, you know, that, that is so important. And so many diseases are, are caused by inflammation in our body. And it's things that have built up for years that, you know, when we hear, and my husband says it all the time, bless his heart, (laughs) but uh, when he'll be like, well, it didn't bother me when I was a kid, Uh (laughs) uh-huh. But it, it's built up over time and your cells exactly. over time. And so what, yeah, what didn't bother you in, in your teens and 20s may bother you now in your 40s and 50s. And it's pay attention to that. Right. One thing I do remember as you were talking, when I was young, I did not like dairy. I didn't want dairy. My body's like, eh. well, one of the things the holistic um, ep- epidemiologist discovered is I have a dairy allergy and issue. <laughs> Wow. And so that's not helping if cancer wants to grow because your immune system is like, oh, I got to go fight off this this cheese that she just ate right. rather. And that's kind of like the cancer is like, yeah, I'm going to, you know, that's, that's really what it was. But my, my cancer turned into the breast cancer because the hormones, one of them was called the growth hormone. Cancer loves high growth hormones. Okay. But it was again, related to the bigger tumor pushing on my pituitary. <laughs> so it was just I'm just so glad to, like, like I said, asking questions and I wanted to be a good role model for my sons as well. And they know how much I love running. And one of the things they did with me before my last breast cancer stuff, I had a double mastectomy, by the way, on my birthday, my 49th birthday, Birthday. (laughs) but it was like, okay, I'm tired of this shit. Excuse me. And, um, but that's what it was. And I said, I'm going to go run a race because I didn't know when I could again. And so my sons ran with me. Uh, It was two or three weeks before the surgery and they ran with me. They were 19 and 16 at the time, but they stayed with me, but they knew that was going to make mom happy. And, and at the end of the, you know, my husband was waiting for us with our dogs, but that's, it's just, we built that, you know, memory together is because I just, I didn't know Julianne, what was going to happen. Yeah. Well, and two, I think that's important for anybody who's listening who is going through a similar situation where you are living in uncertainty, you know, whether it be in your job or in life. And, you know, the thing I love about this this podcast and this platform is, 
yes, we have a lot of people who listen to it for career advice and things like that. But the truth is, if you are not healthy as a person, you're not going to show up as your best in any other place that you're showing up in. And so these kinds of conversations are so very important uh, to be able to tell our listeners, like, we know we've, we've all been there. We've all gone through things and making sure that you are are healthy and aware of what's going on in your body is so, so important. So Bridget, what are some um, just like tools or practices that you used where they can really take away from this episode of I'm going to start implementing this in my self-care routine? Well, I think the main thing is to start simple. Some people try to do too much too soon and then they quit doing it. I also, simple means like one, you know, add one step at a time, meaning movement is so important. I think it's very healing. If you want to run, that's fine, but you have to enjoy it. Otherwise, you're not going to do it. I know some people who prefer bike riding and I I can't ride a bike anymore (laughs) because the brain tumor, it's overbalanced, you know, even though it's still there, but it's dead. So I love running. I still do that. Find some kind of movement that you enjoy. It could be gardening. It doesn't have to be something wild. Another thing is uh, be careful or or change your diet a little bit, a little bit at a time. I definitely being certified in nutrition made me realize I really looked at all the labels then. And so I say away from uh, personally from a lot of processed food, just because it's okay to treat yourself occasionally, but don't eat it too much because there's so, if it's got more than, you know, four or five ingredients, it's really not food. <laughs> That's how I look right. at it. Right. It's not food, but in make sure you rest, you know, make time for rest. We know that um, rest is so important. And I, yeah, I would recommend you see a doctor too, to find out if you have food allergy. I mean, there's just so many different things. Be open to seeing a holistic, like epidemiologist or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I discovered, you know, my, I had so much more energy, Julianne, when I cut out dairy and it was very, very hard because it's ingrained in our culture. It's in everything. And by the way, I've had cheese in France and I don't have problems over there. It's our dairy here. There's Mm -hmm. so many, it's really keeping it simple. It, it, make sure you do some kind of movement or exercise that you enjoy, that you're going to be consistent. Um, be careful and watch what you eat. Um, find out like, I'm not a big, I've never been a soda person, so I don't drink it. Everybody's like shocked. I'm like, but well, why? I don't want, because <laughs> my body is probably telling me don't yeah. do that. And mm-hmm. I do occasionally I'll have some iced tea, you know, but <laughs> it's Okay. But that's really what it is. Try to keep it simple and listen to your body. That's the most important thing. And don't it, your body and brain. I read a, I can't remember the name of this book. Your body and brain really talk to each other. You've got. Oh to, yeah. The gut brain axis. It's connected. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's very <laughs> connected. Yeah. And you've just, uh, even though you might have those emotions, it's okay too. I, yeah. I also try to, when I say about relax, I also like to take bubble baths. You know, I just, things like that, try to find some you time, especially if you're a parent or a mom, you've got to take care of yourself because how are you going to help all these other people? You know, your children or your your spouse or your, or, or a parent or a dog. And we have a tendency as women to overdo it, helping saying yes to everything and try to, one more thing, try to put something out of your life that is not gratifying, right? Yeah. Absolutely. If it's, if it's not serving you, let it, let it go. You know, <laughs> it's time to release it. Oh, this has been such an important conversation to have. And, you know, you just dropped so many little gems of knowledge that just <laughs> float out so easily. So this is an episode y'all want to go back and write some of these things down with, but I mean, the main takeaway, right. Is to keep it simple, right. From how you relax to how you eat your food, you know, um, listen to your body. If, if you are eating something and you have a headache shortly after your blood yeah. shortly after pay attention, you just ingested something that your body is not happy with, you know? And so it's not just, Oh, I have a headache. Okay. Well, why just start getting curious and asking yourself, right? Like, Hmm, 
Maybe, what did I eat today? Um, you can keep a food journal for a little while and just and see, you know, what, what kind of is working for you, what you're responding to, things like that. Um, I know so often people are like, well, I want to go to the doctor and I don't want to do this. And, and that's fine until, <laughs> you know, exactly. it's fine until. So really get in touch with your body and the, and the things that you're putting in your body. And also you have to be your greatest advocate. You have to be the one that, that stands up for yourself and says, okay, well, I might not want to go to the doctor, but why is it because maybe you don't have a good doctor, go find a good doctor, you yes. know, and, and be willing to really again, advocate for yourself. And uh, Bridget, how can people connect with you? Uh, is, are you on LinkedIn? How, how are people best able to connect with you? I'm on LinkedIn and that I'm on Instagram, but that's more about my running stuff <laughs> for, for fun. And then my website is BridgetCutchell.com, the way it's spelled. And that's where I you can see my blog posts and things yeah. like that. And I started blogging because of my sons. It's their fault. They're like, mom, you're a good writer. You should share what you're going through. And that was therapeutic. I had yeah. to, my sons helped me too. It was not, I wasn't like the brave mom hiding everything. I kind of, I didn't sh share too much right away, but um, I wanted them to know mom's going to be okay. And, but you needed to be, to not, you know, holding that kind of emotion aside is not good either. That's right. That's right. <laughs> express, you know, um, and, I, and I love when you were saying that it can be as simple as going for a walk, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of times just getting out into nature, just letting the sun shine on your face, just yes. those simple, simple things. We as humans tend, especially as women, I'm just going to say it, <laughs> we, we tend to overthink and overcomplicate everything. And so, you know, your advice and what I've been taking away thus far is just really keep it simple. That's what I've learned. And especially you still don't know. You got to focus on what's important. And that kind of helps you keeping it simple, helps you focus on what's important. And I didn't realize the value that I had until I, isn't that weird? We take our value for granted. I had clients that said, I, I was honest with them too. And they're like, start your own business. So I started my own business going through bald, being bald and stuff, but it gave me a confidence. In fact, you just got to do that. Do something that again, that you enjoy and that you have just surround yourself with the right doctors and, and friends. I know it sounds cheesy, but it's true. Right. Well, and you know, it sounds cliche because it's yeah. true. Yes, <laughs> it's it's true. true because it's true <laughs> and, and it does work. Oh, Brigitte, thank you. So see, I dropped a Brigitte in there. Um, Brigitte. Thank you so much for this conversation and your time today and, and sharing these great little gems and nuggets uh, with our audience today. Y'all be sure to connect with Bridget. She's on Instagram. If you want some running advice, <laughs> go <laughs> hang out with her over there. If not, visit her website. We'll be sure to link that in the chat below. Uh, Bridget, do you have one last piece of advice for our listeners who are like, what is, what is a simple thing I could do tonight to kind of look in to what I'm doing for myself? I would recommend that you don't, this is kind of hard, funny to say, I guess because it's election week, don't look at TV, don't read the news right now, just chill. Doesn't matter who, what, when, just chill, sit down with your kids, sit down with your dogs or your your spouse and go look at the sunset if you can. Just, I think there's gonna be a sunset today, right? <laughs> but I think that's what it is. It's just don't immerse yourself in too much information. Sometimes you just gotta, I mean, you have to do some research, but for today, just relax, right? Mm -hmm. Just at the end of the day, just relax and enjoy the moment. Yes. So after you're done listening to this podcast, Press stop and then relax. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yes. All right, ladies, be sure to connect with Bridget. She is just a gem. And if you're looking for more conversations like that, head over to womenleaderspodcast.com. Bye for now.